Hi, this is KJ from Team 206R. This is our world's robot for back spin up. And I just wanted to make a quick little explanation video to show off some of the unique and cool features of this robot. And this robot did pretty well at Worlds. We ended up making division finalists and lost to the eventual world champions. So, starting off with the chassis, it's pretty simple 30 long by 25 wide. Um, three wheels that are powered but we do have a fourth unpowered wheel just to help with our balance kind of issues. Six motors on the drive. And we run 36 to 48 on 600 RPM motors. So that gives us a final, gives us a final output of 450 on these wheels. Uh, something interesting we did to get this to fit inside the five volt gap is instead of cutting the 48 tooth gears in half like most teams do, we just kind of filed the edges so that they would nest inside the, the wheels. Uh, something else we did was make sure the, um, the wheels were dropped one hole instead of being on top or on the middle hole. So this would give us more clearance going over the barrier. And as you can see, we also do not include any bottom bracing on the robot so that we both wouldn't get stuck on discs and uh, we would clear the barrier pretty easily. So onto the most unique part of this robot, which was the motor distribution. So we actually had two motors that would power both the intake and the catapult at the same time. So that means when we spin these motors forward, um, the intake would spin and the catapult would not. But we spin the motors backwards, the catapult would start reloading. So that's done through the use of this ratchet here. So if I spin this ratchet, you can see it starts slipping and it doesn't move the rest of this stuff. And I can show you this better with the motors. So if I spin it forward, you see it slips, but allows the rest of the rest of the intake to spin. However, I, if I spin the motors backwards, the catapult starts going down. So the benefits of having this system is that um, we can allocate two motors to spin the intake and two motors to spin the catapult, which allows us to be a lot faster than most teams, which only allocate uh, one motor per system. As for the motors, um, these are 200 RPM motors, and then they're connected through a long axle over here. And the only thing that's connected to the motors are this, this 36 gear and this six tooth. These are actually free spinning, as you saw earlier, but they're powered through this ratchet. So uh, once it gets to the catapult, it's one to seven, and for the intake, it's three to one, and it's uh, chained over there to 1200. Oh, we did have a chain here, from here to the top, but I guess it fell off during the flight or something. So for the intake, this uh, axle spins at 1200 RPM, while this bottom spins at 600. We had a pretty unique setup here where we had uh, flex wheels on the bottom, flex wheels on the top, and then a conveyor here to, to kind of carry the discs away. To kind of carry the discs up. So I can give you a quick demo of the intake working here. So as you can see, it's pretty fast um, due to the two motors that we allocated to the engine. To tension the chain, we have a simple kind of kind of two bar pivot here, kind of two bar linkage here, and the intake just pivots right here. Um, because we do do a lot of defense with the front of the intake, we do have a, a double stack C channel here just to make sure that nothing bends. Um, and we have a piston over here kind of tucked away which actually serves two purposes. One of them is to help us intake three stacks during autons. So. And the other purpose is, if we ever intake a fourth disc, we can just lift the piston up and it'll fall straight out. And that's another benefit of having the conveyors because if we had wheels here, they wouldn't really slide out, but with the conveyors, it just goes out of the way and lets everything be loose. So for the funnel, we found that actually having straight pieces, having straight pieces actually helped the, actually funnel the discs the best. I can give you a quick demo. So I put the disc here. It just goes straight in. For the rollers, 
we had double rollers and something interesting is that these spin the same direction while most teams would have these spin opposite directions and we do that because one of them is below the roller and the other one is on top of the roller and so spinning this way is more beneficial when we're under but spinning this way when we're on top of the roller is more beneficial and then something we liked about having top rollers is that this actually would kind of lift the robot a little bit above the roller so that if there were any really tough rollers, we would drive farther into them and the entire weight of the robot would be pushing down on the roller. So we never had any issues with um, the roller not spinning well at once. So as for the catapult, we do have a Mingo mech, which is just um, having the basket pivot on the thing. And we do need to tension it downwards due to like the way our arc is. We kind of have kind of a large travel, but the way we band it downwards is we have one band here and then one band here. So let me switch the camera. So we have one band here that stays on for the entire match. And then we have two other bands. You see this red zip ties that will release at the end of Auton through the use of this release mode. So this band that stays on the whole match is just banded straight from the Mingo mech to the top of the catapult tower. While the bands that are released are actually banded under the spacer just to give it some um, like more pull. And then I can show you the release here. If I can remember the button. Oh, I don't have the button. But um, there's string here, and there's not a pulley, so if I just pull, it releases just like that. And then, in order to change our tensioning for the match, we had one piston here, and then one piston, one piston here, and it's mounted just down here. And this piston, it's kind of scuffed the way it pulls, but it does work. So when, when we need more power, we'll just fire the piston, and it'll start pushing the catapult harder. And then onto the expansion. This expansion was really nice because it was kind of integrated into the robot. Um, as you can see, we had four strings, one, two, three, four. And the strings kind of route around this center bar. And the way that we release is just through the use of this piston. It'll push up and then just release our strings just like that. So that's pretty much it for this robot. Um, it was really simple, or not really simple, but it was really clean and it worked uh, really well. And so yeah, thank you for watching this video.